Thanks for joining us. Aloha. <laughs> My aloha, friend, aloha. my friend Stephanie uh, made this for me this morning, I, and, and I was so tickled and thrilled by it that I'm not going to take it off until it wilts. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of which, while I have this opportunity, I wanted to say I uh, stumbled across the press release about Lojas this year, and the headline was something like, you know, the new eco warriors meet the grandfathers of green, and uh, I spent five or ten minutes puzzling over who the grandfathers of green might be before I, uh, before I reached the obvious conclusion <laughs> that it's me. <laughs> and so I wanted to let, uh, I w while the Aloha staff is here in the room, I want let you know whoever wrote that press release, I'm going to find out, I'm going to chase you down, I'm going to kick your ass. <laughs> <laughs> That's such an um, inspiring and positive note to start on, Brian. <laughs> I think of it as the, you know, as the steel hand and the velvet glove or something like there that. There you yeah. go. <laughs> um, it's a great uh, honor to be at Lojas, always an inspiring thing for us. Uh, and particularly at this time, you know, Simran and I have the privilege of making our livings talking about uh, responsibility, talking about environmental and social responsibility. And, you know, in light of the fact that human beings are the only species in the universe, as far as we know, that can conceptualize its own impact on its environment, and in light of the fact that more people are concerned about this than ever, and that we're on the verge of uh, a sort of an awakening of our responsibility for this, it seems to us that we are, in a way, immensely fortunate, because we, we were alive at the time when humanity the only species capable of grappling with this question, is in the middle of grappling with this question. It's a definitive moment in the history of our species, and we get to make our livings talk about it, and I can't think of anything better. Yeah, and we're grateful to all of you, because without an audience, um, we would just be sitting in a room together talking about these things, so thank you. Can we uh, start our slides, please? We can skip through the ones that say Brian and Simran and what we're going to be talking about today. But we wanted to kind of traverse the ter terrain of, of what the green conversation is and where we see the conversation going, what are some of the dominant stories that are, that are being addressed, and, and what are the things that are really being obscured. So uh, to, to kind of begin at the beginning, where do you think the story um, has been before we got to where we are right now? Well, you know, we used to talk to, Mother Earth News started in 1970, and we talked to a small but deeply passionate audience. Uh, and we talked about, you know, how to convert your car. We have, a, we have a story in the 70s about how to convert your car into a gas-electric hybrid. Um, well, one of our most popular websites is a wood-burning pickup truck. Not that good for the environment, but kind of cool anyhow. <laughs> um, and, you know, uh, th our audience was a group of, of revolutionaries, really. And we loved being part of the revolution at Mother Earth News. I mean, not that I worked there in 1970. But I read the magazine then, and I was swept up in this movement as well, this revolution. Um, over time, of course, people became distracted with having children, raising children, making a living. Um, our generation moved on to other concerns, but we didn't leave our values behind when we did that. And gradually, the questions that we were trying to answer, I think, in the 70s mm -hmm. have moved into the mainstream because answering those questions has become much more critical. Furthermore. Um, I think somewhere along the line it dawned on us that we weren't going to address these questions successfully by spontaneously changing the minds of everybody on the planet. That wasn't going to happen. We needed to start um, building human enthusiasm, engaging the imaginations of literally billions of people, and that changed the tone of the conversation. So my uh, take on where we are today is that people like you and I are in the business of firing up the imaginations mm -hmm. of the billions of people who listen to us and see what we write. Do you see it more or less the same way? I do. I have a wonderful slide of a hippie in a yurt. Are, are our slides working? Can I help out in any way? <laughs> That's one minute. They're on their way. Oh, great. How did, did you hear that? Or no, it was it? a hand motion. Oh, okay, excellent. So, um, so here's how I often describe this. It's sort of this granola munching, off the grid living, yurt embracing lifestyle. And 
me, <laughs> and, and the grandfather Brian. of green. Um, but really, it was this idea that in order to love Mother Earth, you had to live a really scarce life. And I think the, the yeah, initial... Yeah, austere. It was austere, austere. Indeed. And, and man, you were righteous, you know, in and, your austere. And high a lot of the time, as I recall. <laughs> you, you, yes. <laughs> Listen, I don't know. I was, you know, just learning to crawl. Um, <laughs> yeah, of course, yeah. I suppose. Yeah, thanks very much, kid. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm used you, to it. One was yeah. w you were high and mighty. Yeah. Okay, you okay. absolutely were. So, so if we can go to the next slide, there's our okay. There's our grandfather. There's our grandfather hippie, and this is what we see today. We can go to the next slide, please. Mr. Natural. Exactly. Um, oh. This is a slide of Van Jones, and I don't know if you guys are familiar with Van. I think he's here somewhere. He was. Um, uh, well, uh, maybe he was, <laughs> and um, and uh, Van I think is symbolizes uh, wh where the conversation has become, and what I mean by that is it's a conversation, as he says, green for all. So it's a conversation that belongs to everybody, and it's a lifestyle that belongs to everybody. So if what you're passionate about is uh, food then you can look at local and organic and seasonal food. If you're excited about energy, then you can look at photovoltaics. You can talk about um, you know, where our energy comes from, where we need to be going. If, you're, if your passion is, is something like clothing, then you know, talking about organic clothing, talking about fair trade. I mean, these are all things that are a part of the conversation and available to anyone wherever they are. That, the other thing about Van's part of the conversation and, and the social justice part of the conversation that I think is super important if we're going to address these puzzles, if we're going to get something done here, the thing we need to get done, then it's about moving resources around. Mm -hmm. When you move resources around, the best, most efficient way to do it in society is to get a strong consensus that involves a lot of people. To get a strong consensus that involves a lot of people, you have to be fair to all those involved in the conversation. And so fairness becomes an intrinsic part of the environmental conversation. And I think it's going to be increasingly important. I don't think we can detach social justice from the environment. I think one of the publications that does the best job of that is on the next slide. That's a good one. It is a good one. That's one of Brian's publications. And if you don't know, Brian publishes Utney Reader, Mother Earth News, Natural Home, and there are copies of these available for you as you walk out the door.